Pretty much everyone in the Dead by Daylight community is aware of the fact that nowadays the Shack in the Dead Dog Saloon map features a breakable wall in between the two lockers. This is the only shack in the game that does this, which makes this structure very unique compared to the other ones of its kind. But did you know that during the public test build for the Chains of Hate chapter, this breakable wall was actually located between the God Palette and the Window Vault? This made the otherwise God Palette incredibly unsafe as you can see, so it makes sense that this was changed for the live release of the update. Furthermore, originally breakable walls were designed to fit in with the environment a lot more than they do now, and in fact many players had trouble distinguishing and detecting them during their debut in the 3.6.0 PTB. Additionally, there were many other little fake doorways that looked pretty much identical to breakable walls, which would regularly confuse players even further. This was also compounded by the fact that during the first few days of the public test build, the Dead Dog Saloon map was incredibly dark. Like, I'm pretty sure this wasn't a glitch, or at least many players weren't sure if the map was bugged or not, though it was listed as a known issue, so I don't really know. Now, during this PTB there was also another problem, and that was to do with the fact that the main building featured an infinite loop because of how the breakable walls were spread out. Thankfully though, all of these issues were resolved once the update was released to the live servers. For example, breakable walls were changed to be more in line with the way pallets look, the map was made significantly brighter, and the infinite loop in the main building was fixed. Strangely enough, however, a couple of months ago this exact infinite returned, however that was quickly identified as a bug and was fixed fairly swiftly. Fun fact, even in the current versions of Dead by Daylight, there are actually still remnants of these so-called fake breakable walls in the Dead Dog Saloon map. However, this isn't a problem at all since they aren't in any way distracting, also it's easier for the developers to just reuse already existing assets. Speaking of game devs reusing stuff, did you know that there are actually quite a bit of reused animations in DVD? For instance, whenever you enter a snowman as a survivor during one of the winter events, the animation that plays is in fact the same one for jumping in the hatch. And when you leave the snowman, your character plays the same animation for exiting a locker with head on, which on the surface seems really strange, however in practice the animations actually look fairly convincing, you know? Another case of reused animations from the 2023 Bone Chill event is, believe it or not, the animation for receiving snow skulls, which is just a very sped up version of the totem blazing animation, in order to match the speed of the interaction. The booning animation is also reused when receiving a favor from a paper lantern during one of the Lunar New Year events, which honestly, does anyone even remember paper lanterns? One more instance of the Dead by Daylight developers reusing animations is, strangely enough, the Visceral Canker Harvest interaction, which uses the same animation for generator repairing. Fun fact, this is actually the old gen repair animation from back when it used to be the same for all sides of the generator. There's also the General Interact animation, which is used for a wide range of stuff, including glyphs, red envelopes, crown pillars and more. Funnily enough, this animation was at one point bugged, as your character would just freeze until you completed the interaction. Speaking of bugs, the next thing on our list has to do with the Void from the 2023 Haunted by Daylight Halloween event. Remember that the Void would forcefully kick you out after a certain period of time being there? Well, there were a couple of ways you could circumvent this, and bypassing this would actually reveal that the void wasn't taking place in a separate world or dimension, like for example the nether or the end in Minecraft, instead the void was located just a little bit off of the real map, as could be witnessed when playing on the Dead Dog Saloon. But this was most clearly seen when playing on the Eerie of Crows, as sometimes the textures from the outskirts of the map would straight up just clip in the void, which to be honest looks incredibly funny in my opinion. Now, the way you could bypass the void kicking you out was by trying to spam the vote button near a window, by wiggling off the killer's shoulder, or by timing the portal exit correctly. There were probably more ways, but these were the ones I could find. Thankfully, the void was only released for a limited time and in a significantly modern version of Dead by Daylight, since otherwise I can't even imagine how much more bugs it would have if it had been added during the early days of DVD. Speaking of old DVD, did you know that in the first couple months of the game's existence, every killer had their own personal hook model that was used on every map they played on, which meant that hooks were not tied to the realm, but instead they were killer dependent. 
For example, even if you are playing Wraith on Coldwind Farm, the hook's design wouldn't be the one for the actual realm, instead the model used would be the one currently found in Auto Haven Wreckers. Survivors quickly learned that they could identify who the killer was just by simply taking a look at the design of the nearest hook shortly after spawning. And so killers like for example Wraith that relied on stealth would have their initial surprise aspect completely gutted. Because of this thankfully hooks were changed in patch 1.2.0. Change. The specific hook model is now dependent on the realm of the map, rather than on the killer. Not only did this fix the problem with survivors knowing which killer it was from the first second they loaded into the match, but this change was also motivated by artistic choices as the newest hook model at that time, the one in Haddonfield, would have looked very out of place in other realms. Now, fun fact, this design principle returned with the Alien chapter, since whenever you are playing as or against the Xenomorph, the killer's hook model will always overwrite the one for the realm, which personally I'm not a big fan of, since it stands out as a minor inconsistency among hook designs. The next thing on our list is the clown's original design. During the pre-development stages of this killer, the developers designed two possible killers. One of them was a World 1 soldier who could throw gas grenades and the other was a clown who threw balloons which the killer could teleport to as well as reveal nearby survivor auras. Now because both designs were considered fairly interesting, they were combined into a clown who throws gas grenades, which is actually why the afterpiece tonic is referred to as gas bomb in the game files. Well, the way that clown ended up being is probably the lamest way that the situation could turn out. Just imagine how cool it would have been if the clown could throw balloons and then teleport to them. And instead we got a killer that was originally thought of as the ring master and the medicine man, and that is currently considered to be not only one of the weakest, but also one of the most uninteractive killers in the whole game. Well, yeah, I guess that was it. This was part 5 of the most weird and obscure facts from Dead by Daylight's history. If you're interested in these types of videos, make sure to check out my other ones in this series by clicking on the playlist in the top right corner. Sorry if this video may seem a little rushed, and also sorry for the fact that my voice sounds a little strange, I've just been kind of sick lately. Nonetheless, I really hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, then make sure to let me know by leaving a like down below, and also I would be glad if you considered subscribing as well. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!